plain states it's a lot of wheats and grains and uh, grasses and they become scarcer through Texas but still scrubby grass and whatnot kind of harder looking baked earth but not quite what you'd think of as desert and even a lot of New Mexico is kind of that way but it starts to slowly turn to less and less vegetation or any kind of grasses and more the kind of scrub brush or uh, little dried up looking bushes and such some cactus as you get into uh, the western part of New Mexico and Arizona and I remember seeing these rocks kind of glossy looking rock until later figuring out oh that was the petrified forest <laughs> basically they were trees maybe millions of years ago and uh, summer came along you can't see how far I'm reaching my arms out they're uh, some of them probably more than 10 feet long and they look like big long rocks as though there was some fossilized tree trunk which is exactly what it was but um, you, you don't really notice it well I don't guess you see the bark as much and you don't really notice it has rings or that it's tree like from the highway you just see a bunch of boulders in a big red dirt earth field and through that area and beyond I believe is where the painted desert begins and not really sure how I got that name other than the fact that there are a lot of different colors um, all a lot of earth tones browns reds yellows uh, black gray all these earth tones of the rocks and the hillsides and the hillsides dotted with different colored rocks and it's all very pretty um, but uh, growing up back east where it's a lot of green you don't I didn't feel as restful in that sort of environment it's also relatively high elevation there on uh, the northern part of Arizona you're not aware of it but you're up on the continental shelf at the continental divide right where the Rocky Mountains kind of come down to the southwest most of Arizona is relatively flat but the overall land elevation is like a thousand feet above sea level so it's it's, it's relatively high level of land and uh, the air center it's also arid air, dry air, so it doesn't hold moisture as well. At night, you wouldn't think it, but it gets down to probably 50s during the summer, when during the days it would get up to over 100. But then a lot of the time during the days, it's just hot sun. It's not muggy. You don't sweat exactly or feel like you're in a blanket of warm, moist air, but it's hot you feel baked <laughs> and uh, drink a lot of water I think that was by that point surely I had discovered the two liter bottle trick some days I would end up sleeping and I found it was easier to walk at night but um, a lot of the nights I'd walk all night long and uh, having the extra water certainly helped but one other odd thing about Arizona is that for some reason going out and for some reason coming back. I spent extra time in Arizona. I didn't plan on it, didn't think that, well, this is a great place. I need to spend a lot of time here as much as I just ended up kind of wandering around. Uh, going west initially. I probably spent a whole week going back and forth from one end of the state to the other on uh, the north side of the state on 40, Interstate 40, between uh, Homer on the east side to Williams, Arizona on the western end, and uh, just kind of exploring the desert and those towns 
kind of a spirit walk it really was at that point I think more of a search for self or feelings of uh, connection it's kind of magic I almost felt like it was a place of power that uh, I was really getting some kind of a connection there but nothing I can put into words and certainly I don't come back with any particular magical feeling now about it I uh, just think about it like I was wandering around the desert for a week. 